Praise God. Thank God for the online church. <laughs> a church that's make, making a difference in people's lives, and I thank God. I thank God for you. Praise God. Let's get a give somebody give me a sound check. Uh, let's see. Ryan, are you there? If so, give me a sound check. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Loretta Jackson in Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hey, we're going you sound to. Good. You sound good, Pastor Carter. Thank you, Brother Ryan. You do too, man. God bless you. Always good. <laughs> Always good to hear your voice. It's so yeah, good to be you. in the God land of the living, Ryan. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like like the guy said, hey, I woke up and I read the newspaper and I looked at the obituary page and my name wasn't on it, so I'm still alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 yeah, praise God. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Ryan, can you lead us in prayer, please, my brother? Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day, and we're going to rejoice because you made it and we're in it. Uh, Lord, we just want to, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending in the heaven and defeating death in the, in the tomb. <clears throat> Lord, we want to thank you for providing and meeting and exceeding all of our needs. And we just want you to, we want to thank you for giving Pastor Carter uh, the wisdom, courage, and the knowledge to, to teach us your word again today. And we want to bless this online ministry, and we want you to bless everybody around our, around this great nation, and we want you to bless our, our military as well and, the, and bless our president as well. Lord, we want you to the heal the sick, come down, and, and let us, you know, guide, guide us to where you want us to be, and show mold us and shape us to where how you want us to be. And, and Lord, let's just have a, a fellowship in you, a great fellowship in you today. So Lord, we just want to say we, we thank you, we love you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That's Ryan Trogler, ladies and gentlemen, up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> And he's a prayer warrior, and he loves the Lord. We thank God for you, Ryan, and your family. And we thank God for all of you for taking time out to be with us to worship the Lord today. Many of you are online on your computers. So many are on uh, by phone. And uh, we just thank God for that you're reaching out to people and telling them about the online church. The online church is a way in which... We worship God, and, and we extend this ministry to those who do not have a church. We extend the ministry to the sick and shut-ins. Many cannot get out to church. Many people are in transition, uh, moving from place to place. And so we want you to know that there is a platform, there's a place where we can meet together for the purpose of worshiping the Lord not for anything else, not for raising funds, not for uh, talking politics, not for uh, having bingo games or playing the lottery. No, we come that we can come together to worship the Lord. You know, when Sunday morning comes around, I want to be around the people of God. And because God has assigned me and called me to develop this online church, I don't get the opportunity to go out to a house of worship, to a brick or mortar church and many of you do not but God has made a way that we can fellowship with one another as one body in Christ and we praise God that this is a blessing praise God and Dustina says she's glad that uh, Michael's off today and the kids are there so they the family is gathered together ladies and gentlemen the online church what a wonderful way for the family to gather together to worship hear the word of God, <laughs> fellowship with other believers, and we just thank God. So thank you for sharing that, Dustina. Praise God. We're going to ask uh, Jackie Fisher uh, from Kentucky, the beautiful state of Kentucky. We want to ask Jackie Fisher if she will come and read the scripture, and we want you to download 1 Corinthians chapter... 10 verses 1 through 14. Let's listen carefully to the word of God as Jackie Fisher brings us this word. Thank you, Jackie. 
Good morning, Pastor, and good, good morning. morning. I'm going to be reading today 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 14, The Idolatry in the Wilderness. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ but with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for an example. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dear, dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. And that's taken from 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 14. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie Fisher. Thank you so much for reading the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie reads the, the word well, and, and she puts her heart into it, and, and she she takes her time and just articulates every word. And so <laughs> we have a good, strong reader. And as we listen to the word, we are edified by the Holy Spirit, and we give God the glory. So we thank God for Jackie Fisher. This um, week, we're going to finalize our series on idolatry in the church. We're going to hit, we're going to hit home a little in, in a few areas today. Some of us might have to cry out, ouch. But, the, you know, the ouch is, is, is part of our healing process, a part of our deliverance. So we're going to look at idolatry in the church, uh, part four. And, uh, you know, next week we'll probably have more people coming online because we're off the idolatry series. You know, church folks are funny. Y'all are funny. I'm funny. You know, when people know you're going to be teaching about a certain thing, and if they're involved in it, they will not participate in it. I remember when I was a pastor of a brick-and-mortar church, and, and I told the people, oh, we're gonna be, I'm going to be preaching for the next three weeks on adultery. You know a lot of people didn't come to church for the next three weeks. Which, which, how are you going to interpret that, Ryan? They, would not, they did not show up. But after three weeks were over, they came back. People are funny. You know, there are people right now who ought to be online, live, with us at the online church. They are not in church. Don't, let, don't be fooled, everybody. Everybody in America is not going to church. Only about 20% of Americans attend church. And of that 20%, yes, only about 20%, some say 18% of the People in America attend church, and of those, most of them do not attend church regularly. They pick and choose. Some may go to a brick-and-mortar church two or three times a month. Some may go two times a month. And some may go when the male chorus is singing or when the children's choir are singing. Other than that, you know what people do? 
people stay home, they stay in bed late, they say, oh, I'm tired, or they have some excuse, and they make every excuse for not attending church. But the online church pulls the excuses right out from under our feet. There is no excuse. There is no excuse for anybody not being able to dial uh, uh, 10 numbers. Okay, dial 10 numbers on your phone and you are right in fellowship with other believers and you're in the presence of God. So tell everybody about the online church. And, and I pray that people will make an effort. God loves people so much that he's providing opportunities for people to enter into his presence. And, and we thank God for that because God does not want anyone to perish. No, he does not want anyone to perish and and this time of the year ladies and gentlemen it is difficult for a lot of people so we're going to conclude today our four-part series on idolatry in the church and uh, if you want to go back and review these messages go to my YouTube channel YouTube slash forward slash Leroy Carter and you can get these or visit my website or give me a call and I will send the of recordings to you but I'm so glad that God has chosen this ministry to to be a witness for him and I'm so glad that we have powerful warriors who come on uh, who assist with this ministry so glad I uh, see my son Wes and his precious wife Marisol are on and they're supporters of this ministry Dustina Jackie and uh, Ryan and Loretta and so many other people and I know if I start calling names I'll get into trouble so we just thank God let's just review the scripture Father God, we thank you for your blessings and, and pray for your anointing. It is your anointing that breaks the yoke. It is your anointing that gives us the, the word to, to preach. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so we honor you, Holy Spirit, and we pray that this word will go forth and that those who are listening by way of recording, those who are listening live, that you will make a difference in their lives today, Lord God. God, and that uh, you reveal to us who you are, reveal your word to us. And I pray in the name of Jesus that people will be saved today and that they will be delivered and that be, they will be healed and set free from bondage. Somebody out there today, Lord, needs you. And so we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And we humble ourselves beneath your mighty hand, Lord, <laughs> and we thank you. Moses is writing, I'm sorry, Paul is, Paul is writing, uh, reminding um, the people of how Moses brought Israel through the wilderness. And, and in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, he has a purpose. God anointed Paul uh, to go to Corinth to, to uh, preach the word, to correct a lot of things in that city. And then uh, one of the major things that Paul identified in Corinth was the the, the the uh, breath of idolatry. I mean, they had so many idols. They worshipped everything and anything. And they had monuments uh, to, to, to things and monuments, even a monument to a false god. And so Paul writes, moreover, brethren, I would not, I don't want you to be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. He reminded all the people how their forefathers came under the cloud, being led by the cloud of God, the glory cloud coming through the wilderness. All were under that cloud. All were baptized unto Moses into the cloud. Now, this is not uh, the baptism for salvation. It means they were baptized under the cloud. The cloud overshadowed them as Moses led them. And as Moses went into the tabernacle, uh, when the glory cloud stopped, and, um, and they were all baptized in the sea, meaning they all passed through the, the Red Sea when God opened the sea. And we did all eat the same spiritual meat, verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, meaning the four, forefathers ate of the same spiritual meat. In other words, Jesus was in that cloud leading them. The Holy Spirit was in that cloud leading them. They drank 
uh, the same water. They ate the same spiritual meat. God gave them the word of God. God spoke to them personally on Mount Sinai. And they did eat the same. They did drink the same spiritual drink. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That spiritual rock, Jesus, followed them through the wilderness. But look at uh, verse 5. But many of them, God, with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen, you would wonder how could people who are led by God's glory cloud every day, people who came out of Egypt, people who saw God's mighty hand, people who witnessed the ten plagues that God put on, on Pharaoh and Egypt, people who witnessed the, the uh, Passover, who witnessed the death angel coming by and sparing them because there was blood on their doorposts. And uh, how could these same people who also witnessed when they came to the Red Sea and Pharaoh's charioteers were coming down upon them, God opened the sea so that they could walk through on dry land and uh, arrived on the other side of the Red Sea safely. And the same people watched as God uh, uh, poured that water back into the sea and drowned Pharaoh's army. You will wonder, and Paul is wondering, how could God be displeased with them, and how could they forget God and all of his wonders and miracles? Ladies and gentlemen, it, it seems like uh, it, it should not have happened that they could forget God, but they did. And we're looking today, ladies and gentlemen, we're not pointing the finger at the Old Testament Hebrews, but look today at the number of people who have seen God's miracles. God has healed you when you were sick. He fed you when you were hungry. He blessed your marriage. He delivered you from bondage. He gave you a job. He gave you a promotion. He prevented you from being destroyed in an automobile accident. He stopped that 18-wheeler, Ryan, from running over somebody. God has done so many miracles in our lives, yet we are so quick to forget him, and, and, and many people use this excuse, I'm tired. Now, if you work, now, if you're like Michael and you work on a Saturday night, you have a reason to stay in bed Sunday morning. But we see Michael's off today, and Michael's up, and he is in church. But so many people have... Uh, uh, pimped God, pimped God. In other words, begged God and prayed to God and God blessed and answered their prayers and given us so much, and yet we are too lazy. We're too lazy to get up and go to church. We're too lazy to even dial our telephone uh, 10 numbers to get into a church setting, into a worship, worship session. And so, yes, God is not pleased with many of us because salvation is free. There is no excuse. I'm going to repeat that. There is absolutely no excuse for anybody in America not to be saved. There is no excuse for anybody who hears the gospel not to be saved. And so God is grieved, just as God was grieved with people in the Old Testament He's grieved with us today. And just as the Old Testament Hebrews uh, worship idols and let things come into uh, their presence that, that replace God, that's idolatry. Idolatry means to allow any person or anything to take God's place in your life. I'm going to repeat that. Idolatry is a sin. Idolatry is to allow any person or anything take first place in your life. It might be uh, uh, going to the movie uh, to see your the latest movie. You're going uh, at church time on Sunday morning. No, you don't have to go to the movie on at church time. Or uh, I got to work this second job. No, you don't have to work this second job. Uh, I got to work this third job. No, you don't have to work this third job. The Bible says remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Well, Pastor Carter, you know, they assigned me to work on Sunday. Well, then if you're off on Monday, make Monday your Sabbath and honor the uh, God and remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Keep it pure. So we're going to take a good look at idolatry because the things that Israel did, we're doing the same things today and making the same excuses. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, 
Many people are going to perish. Many are perishing. And, and the sad thing is, here in, in ancient Israel, they were in the presence of God every day. We've got people right now, it's the 11 o'clock hour Eastern time in the United States. This is church time. It's the church hour. We've got people, they are sitting up in church. I mean, they are sitting up in churches by the thousands, by the millions by the mega millions, ladies and gentlemen, and they, some are looking at their watches right now. You know, uh, idolatry, here's an example of idolatry. The church clerk is allowed 30 minutes, Dustina, 30 minutes to give the announcements of the church and to talk about the events and, and the, the dinners and the ticket sales and all that. The church clerk is given 30 minutes to make the announcements, and the preacher only gets 15 minutes, and people watch him. Watch their uh, clocks or look at their watches 15 minutes. And if he's not finished in 15 minutes, there are people who are arrogant enough to abruptly get up and walk out of church. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. And so God is not pleased. And uh, the scripture says, Paul writes to the Corinthians, and the Corinthians were an idolatrous church. I mean, Paul had to contend with them because idolatry was rampant in that church. Verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition. So uh, we get the examples of the people who came through the wilderness. That's why we need to study our Bible. We need to study the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. The Bible gives us examples. Uh, Galatians says that... Uh, uh, um, the, the, the word of God is our schoolmaster. The law is our schoolmaster. Teaches us what God likes and what God does not like, what pleases God and what doesn't please God. And so we have the word of God, the Bible, the law, uh, to, as, as our schoolmaster to train us in the way in which we should go. The Bible says train up a child in the way in which he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. But a lot of people are stubborn, just like rebellious children. They don't want to be trained. We've got grown-ups. They've been in church for 40 years. They don't want to be trained. They are stuck on where they are. Some of the people in church have been in church, in the brick-and-mortar church, for 30 40 years and are still eating pablum, pablum. Now, you, many of you may not know what pablum is, but pablum is like a little uh, a mixture uh, that our mamas made for us when we were children, and it was soft food. They gave it to us on that little, you know, a little thick spoon, a little small spoon. They gave it to us, spoon, wiped it off our mouths and all that, and, you know, and, 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 and we had to, I remember, hey, Wes, I remember when we used to feed you pablum and, and, or your, your sisters. Uh, we had to play games with you. Uh, I'll say, we'd say, I put it on the spoon and say, uh, Wes, uh, here's the plane. It's coming into the hangar. Open the hangar. Let the plane come in. And you'd open your mouth and we'd put, stick that spoon in your mouth and try to uh, uh, get it out before you clamp your, your, your jaws down on it. Okay? And, and we had to spoon feed our children. And we have to spoon feed people in the church. Now, people in the church who've been there for 30, 40 years, Jackie Fisher, should not have to be spoon fed pablum. Some are, are, should be right now, they ought to be gnawing on chicken bones and turkey bones or rib bones. You know what I mean? We should not have to give the church pablum, the basics, over and over again. This ministry is, is called Back to Basics Ministry. We have to take people back to basics because people get lost. People, most Christians think they're deep. They are not deep. Or most pastors think they're deep and they lead the people way out into the deep waters. But most Christians need a foundation in the word of God. I repeat that. Most Christians need a foundation in the Word of God. Most Christians do not read the Bible. In this ministry, praise God, and I thank God and give him the glory and honor, we take people through the Bible. And so anyone can join and go through the Bible with us, and it won't cost you one single dime. God's Word is free, and we offer it to you for free. So these things were written for examples for us, and for our admonition, 
God is telling us, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. If you think you can stand, you okay, I got this. I got this. You don't have to tell me anything. I got this. Many Christians are, are proud spirits. You can't tell them anything. Many preachers are proud spirits. You can't tell them anything. I got this. Pastor Carter, let me do my ministry my way. And let me do it my way. I'm in charge of this ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of pastors I know who are arrogant, the number of prophets who are arrogant. You can't teach them one thing. You can't teach them diddly because they got this. The Bible warns you, wherefore, let him who thinketh he standeth Take heed lest he fall. It's a hard fall, brother. <clears throat> it's a hard fall, sister, when you get so arrogant, so pompous, and so puffed up that whatever you do in the ministry is all right with you, even though it's contrary to the word of God. Whatever you say, uh, uh, these are my people, Pastor Carter. Don't mess with my people. Leave my people. Hey, I had a, a major prophet, a well-known prophet in this nation, uh, tell me, don't mess with my people. These are my people. Leave them alone. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get to that point, you're ready for a fall. And it's a hard fall. It's a hard fall. And the sad thing about when a preacher falls, a lot of people fall with that pe preacher or that pastor because they have made idols out of that pastor. They have made idols out of that prophet. There are people, ladies and gentlemen, who will follow a prophet, follow a preacher anywhere he goes in the United States. Some will even go overseas with them. They will follow them everywhere. In other words, and whatever comes out of that prophet's mouth, whatever comes out of that pastor's mouth, people believe it. If it's not in the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who that prophet is, who that preacher is, do not believe it. Check the Spirit by the Spirit. Test the Spirit by the Spirit, James says. Read the Word of God for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so important that you get this kind of teaching because this kind of teaching will save your soul, will keep you from perishing. The Bible says, There have no temptation taken you, verse 13, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will also with the temptation make the way of escape. Don't worry about that sickness. Don't worry about those problems coming against you, those problems coming against your marriage, those problems coming against your children. Your children aren't acting right, right in school. Your children have got demons in them. Don't worry about it. You bind those demons. You bind those spirits coming against your household and trust in the Lord and keep on rolling. Well, Pastor Carter, I've been sick for about a month. Yes, but this sickness is not sickness unto death. If God says that to you, you keep on rolling and keep on praising the Lord. And if it is sickness unto death, give God the glory because Paul said to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. We're in a win-win situation, ladies and gentlemen. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, not on idols, keep your eyes on the Lord. And so the scripture says in verse 14, uh, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Paul had the guts, he had the courage to look the Corinthians in their faces. These were church folks, ladies and gentlemen. These were church folks he preached to. These were church folks. These are the same people who said, who they accused him, well, you, you write nasty letters. You're mean in your letters, and you, you chastise us in your letters. But we know you're just a weakling in the flesh because we saw you. And Paul said, hey, look, hey, look, hey, dig it. Check it out. If I have to come back to Corinth, I'm coming back loaded for bear. Hey, Ryan, he said, I'm coming back loaded for, I'm paraphrasing, I'm coming back loaded for bear. Paul said, it would be best for you. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. It would be best for you, Corinthians, to pay heed to the things I'm writing to you and make the corrections and repent than to have me come there uh, in a personal visit. Uh, don't, don't make me have to make a personal visit like Dr. Gene Bratton in Wilmington says, Loretta, don't make me open up this can of whoop. Don't make me have to come there and open up this can of whoop. Because if I come there and open up this can of whoop, Corinthians, 
Y'all are in deep do. And so Paul is saying, pay heed to these things that God has given me to write to you. And I say to you, my friends, pay heed to this, these things God has given me to share with you. Flee idolatry. Get rid of the idols in your life. Uh, get rid of that proud spirit, first of all. That proud spirit. Don't let that demon of pride rule your life. Don't, let, don't get to the place where nobody can teach you anything. Praise God. Get rid of that proud spirit. The Bible says, humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt us in due time. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to take instructions. I have to take instructions. I can't be one of those pastors, one of those preachers, one of those prophets who, who uh, can't take any counsel can't take any advice. Nobody can tell me anything. I'm called of God. God has established this ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, when, when a person reaches that point, he or she is ready to fall. So take heed. And I say to many of you, because many of you are our students in our Back to Basic School of Ministry, be humble. Be humble. Be humble. Be humble. Be teachable. Be teachable. Have a teachable spirit. Uh, be quick to repent. When you hear the word of God and you have to say, ouch, repent of that sin. Tell God you're sorry. Flee from idolatry. Don't let anything or anyone take God's place in your life. Don't let any word, and listen to this carefully, ladies and gentlemen, don't let any word you hear from any prophet or any preacher don't, or, or any politician, hey, let's get, let's get the White House in on this. Let's get Congress in on this. Don't let any word, any voice you hear that raises itself and promotes anything that's contrary to the will of God, cast it down, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says we have, uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so uh, many Christians, and, and, and some of you are, are guilty of this, and, and I'm guilty of this. We let politicians give us this gibberish and, 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 and those things coming out of their mouths that are above the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you be careful who you follow. You be careful who you follow. You be careful uh, joining these political parties. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a state in America where, uh, uh, I'm going to say it the way it is, the Republican Party has put itself above God, above the Bible. And, 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 and I can't believe with all these testimonies going on that there are people who, who are in denial. They're blind. They see no reason for an impeachment. No reason. They, we don't see the evidence. They've been blinded by the truth. And, and I don't care if, if, if uh, uh, Schiff brings witness after witness after witness and evidence after evidence. The people have made up their minds. We're not going to hear it. This is not new, ladies and gentlemen. This whole mentality, we won't believe it. We won't work with other, uh, our opponents. We won't work uh, with, with this. We're going to do our own thing. That started way before Trump became president. That started when Obama was elected. Uh, they met and said, we're not going to work with this man. We don't want a black man in this office. We want, we're going to do all we can to get a white man back in the presidency. Now they got a white man, and he's a liar. He's corrupt. He, he's a whoremonger. Uh, he's a deceiver. And yet, you know what? If he came to your local church, you'll probably be there witnessing and, and clapping your hands. Or if he came to the local town meeting, many people who are listening to me right now will be there clapping their hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at a place where people have made idols out of political leaders, idols out of entertainers, idols out of politicians. They've made idols out of preachers. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the preachers who are preaching, I mean, they're preaching nonsense. They're, they're preaching some of this stuff. I mean, uh, it's like uh, having a bucket of water with 18 holes in the bottom of the bucket. That, and by the time you get home, the bucket's empty. When people go and follow after these people, they follow after these prophets, they follow after these uh, uh, politicians, they 
I take every word that comes out of the president's mouth, and, and the sad thing is the church has been deceived, and uh, they're deceived. They, they believe everything coming out of the Democrats' mouth, everything coming out of the Republicans' mouth, and we've got Christians who do not read the Scripture and measure what they're hearing from these leaders with the Word of God. So we're all guilty. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, that hurts! Ouch! Ouch! Forgive me, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for not studying your word. Forgive us for not believing your word. We're just like the ancient Hebrews. We all have been fed uh, by, by that same spiritual rock that followed us. We've all been baptized under that glory cloud. We've all drunk from that same spiritual rock, yet God is not pleased. Why? Because his people have turned their backs on him, and we would rather follow our leaders. We will follow, rather follow the things they say. We would rather uh, uh, welcome their words above the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I read uh, in the news just uh, three days ago a well-known man. A well-known man, ladies and gentlemen, was interviewed on television, and he said this. I would rather believe the words of Donald Trump than the words of Jesus Christ. This was a well-known man, ladies and gentlemen. It's a sin. It's a shame. It's blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. And, and you and I need to be on the alert because we're surrounded by people who are like-minded. <clears throat> they take the word of the president or they take the word of the representative or the senator over the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the church, we need to uh, test the spirit by the spirit. I don't care what prophet so-and-so is saying. I don't care what kind of prophecy uh, this, this person is saying or that person is saying. Do not be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be deceived. Oh, now, I know there are some of you who are probably going to unlike me after this message. You're going to unfriend me. That's all right. Praise God. I'll just preach to my camera next Sunday morning and, and make the video and send it out to YouTube, hoping that God will touch somebody's heart with the word of God. Because people don't like to be chastised. People don't like to be corrected. People, when they make up their minds, they don't want anybody messing with their mindset. People form these idols and, and, and they're going to go down the tube with these idols. Ladies and gentlemen, there are still people waiting on Michael Jackson to rise from the dead. Michael Jackson ain't coming back. Ryan, he ain't coming back. He ain't coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, there's still <coughs> people. Uh, uh, hey, Jackie Fisher, people in, in Kentucky uh, who are still waiting on Elvis Presley to come back from the dead. Elvis ain't coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, he ain't coming back. There are people still waiting on Muhammad, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi to come back from the dead. He ain't coming back. There are people who are waiting on Buddha to come back. He ain't coming back because he never lived. He never lived. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people waiting on Muhammad to come back. Muhammad ain't coming back, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad is in a place where there ain't no return. Read Luke chapter uh, 16 and, and, and see there's a great gulf between uh, uh, the holy man and, and, the, and the unrighteous dead. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people waiting on uh, a revival, a renewal in America. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Reagan ain't coming back. George Bush ain't coming back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in a position where we need to call on the name of, of the, and there, there are people, staunch Democrats, wanting Obama to come back. Obama ain't coming back, ladies and gentlemen. Obama is the one who sold this nation out to the Arabs anyhow, sold out to the Muslims anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, why would you want him to come back? Ladies and gentlemen, we need to call on the – I know you don't like this, but it's tight, but it's right. It's tight. But it's right. I'm a preacher, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, I did not offend you, and I make no excuses. If I did offend you, I preach what thus saith the Lord. God said in, the, in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 20, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the second commandment is, Thou shalt not make unto you any graven images. 
No idols. Don't make any graven images. This is the word of God. The word of God for the people of God. Now, if you've got problems with that, your issue is not with me. Your issue is with God. And so we all need to read the word of God. We need to accept the word of God, and we need to humble ourselves beneath the mighty hand of God, and we need to repent. Let me just share some things about idolatry in the church. And, and, and I'm just going to go over my list and maybe expound upon a few things. And if you have to say, ouch, say, ouch. And then say, I repent, Lord, and ask God to forgive you. So I've got to say, ouch. How many of you have pictures of Santa Claus in your house? You put up Santa Claus. Or you send out cards with Santa Claus for Christmas. Ouch. Santa Claus has nothing to do with Christmas. Santa Claus is an idol, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Pastor Carter, Santa Claus is for the kids. Kids ought to have some kind of fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, teach them the word of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, these uh, Santa Claus, um, uh, some people, some of them have, some of you have on your lawns, uh, Santa Claus and eight reindeer and a sleigh scene. And then and then along with Santa Claus you you gotta have Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul. Ladies and gentlemen, Frosty the so Snowman is an idol. Okay? Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, Rudolph is an idol. He's a fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, people put Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer above Jesus in your churches. There are Rudolphs in your churches. There are Santa Clauses. The church should not have pictures of Santa Claus, either on the lawn or in the church. Flee from idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Pastor Carter, are you messing with tradition? Well, tradition can kill you. Tradition can destroy you. Tradition destroyed the Jews. They chose their own way of thinking rather than to uh, obey the word of God. Well, look at this one. We're talking about idolatry in the church. Fundraising at Christmas time. Okay, somebody going to dress up like Santa Claus to raise money for First Baptist. You're going to get a big old pot. You're going to get a bell. And ding, 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 ding. And you're going to get permission to stay right, stand right outside the mall and ding your bell. You're gonna ding-a-ling that bell, and you, or or if you, uh, or you might have a couple kids there with some boxes to receive offerings. You're raising money for the church, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time of the year they're raising money for the church, and some people say we're raising money for Jesus. No, you're not raising money for Jesus. You're raising money for the church. It's idolatry. Ouch! 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 Well, here's another uh, a form of idolatry. Uh, this time of the year, December, I mean, people go off the deep end. They get the I wants. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want a new wife. I, I want uh, uh, some new fishing tackle. I want a boat. I want a vacation. I want to hit the lottery. They get the I wants. I mean, they get caught up in the hype of the season. Don't let Satan deceive you this time of the year, ladies and gentlemen. And then, and then some people do desperate things this time of the year. Some people go out and rob stores. They rob gasoline stations. Uh, uh, I'd, li I'd like to personally catch up with the guy who knocked out that 74-year-old woman here in Georgia. Personally. I'm, now, look, I'm 77 years old, but I'd like to personally have an opportunity to, to chastise that man. Who, he knocked this woman out. She was putting air in her car, in her, one of her tires, and this young thug knocked her out with a punch, laid her out on, and stole her vehicle. That's the kind of guy I'd like, but no, no, no. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. People get the I needs this time of the year. You don't want anything. You don't really need anything. It's your lust. The Bible says, James says in his letter, it's our lusts that are destroying us. 
we lust. Why? Because all you see is commercials, fundraisers. Uh, they got uh, uh, little children begging for money. They've got uh, a hospital begging for money. Everybody puts the bag on you this time of the year, and they make you think, listen to this carefully, ladies and gentlemen, that if you don't give, you're a sinner. They even say, well, you're not a Christian if you don't give. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a tither. I give all the year round. Every first of the month when my check comes in, I give 10% to the Lord. I'm a tither. I don't have to uh, fall for the hype this time of the year. And then here's another one, ladies and gentlemen. People get the eye once they get tempted by the devil, and the devil makes you think, you got to get more income for Christmas. Got to buy my wife some jewelry. Got to buy my wife this. Got to get this for the kids because the kids have a wish list. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go into debt. Don't mortgage. Get a third or fourth mortgage on your house. Don't go into bondage for 10 more years, 20 more years because you want to satisfy somebody. That stuff you buy for the kids, after one month, it's history with them. All the hard work you spent to get that for them, the hard money you earned to get that for them, after two weeks it's gone. I know it used to break my father's heart. He'd spend all this money uh, and work an extra jobs around Christmas to get us gifts for Christmas, and we'd break them the same day we got them. Y'all remember that? You, you, what happened to your toy? I broke it, or I broke did it. I broke did it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here's another, this more idolatry in the church, more idolatry in the church. So check this out. I know somebody's going to say, ouch here, sex. Before a church is a sin, ladies and gentlemen, having sex with your spouse before a church, and some of you having sex with somebody who ain't your spouse before a church, it's a sin, ladies and gentlemen. How can you, how can you worship God when you just had sex, when you just uh, had sex with, with your idol, uh, uh, the love of, so-called love of your life? Or, 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 or in the case of some, of some preachers, having sex with a, with a whore or a prostitute. Or in other cases, having sex with somebody of the same sex. And then go to the pulpit. How can you dare defy the pulpit of the Lord God? That's blasphemy. That's idolatry. And then add to this having sex right after church. Or, or in some cases, ladies and gentlemen, Lusting, looking across the aisle in the church, and you're looking at uh, uh, Sister Mabel over there, and you and Sister Mabel are going to hook up at the church. You're going to have, you ain't listening to the preacher. You're lusting. You're having sex already in your heart with Sister Mabel or Brother John or whoever. Ladies and gentlemen, these things take place before church, during church, and after church. And Lord, help those pastors who are fondling those little children after church or before service. These things are happening, ladies and gentlemen. Flee idolatry. Repent. Let us repent. Let us repent. Here's another idol. Going to church because you've got to be at church. Got to get that monkey off my back. Got to get that bad boy off my back. I got this bad attitude. I've had this bad attitude all week. But if I can just get to church, I know I'll be all right. And, and, and so what you're doing, you're pimping God, and the church becomes, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're worshiping an idol, uh, because, and the church becomes your idol rather than God. You can get delivered from that bad attitude. Confess your sins. S deliver yourself. Cast that unclean spirit out. But so many people wait till Sunday to get right with God. And so here's what you do. You go to church. You sit up there. You smile. You say amen. And, and, and hoping the preacher won't say something, that's what you're doing. But you'll say amen for everybody else's sin. And then once church is over, you, you leave feeling better than you went because you've been deceived. You've been deceived. you still got that bad attitude, still got that lustful heart, still got that greediness in you, still got that pride in you. So, so, so get free, ladies and gentlemen. Repent of those sins. Ouch, ouch. Ouch, Pastor Carter. You hit me, Pastor Carter. Check this one out. 
using profanity and blasphemy. Now, in church, you're Charlie Church Boy. <laughs> hey, Wes, in church, they're like Charlie Church Boy. I mean, everything, they're smiling at everybody, and it, all, everything coming out of their mouth is nice and, and sweet. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You're right, Pastor. Preach. Mm -hmm. The word. Say that. Mm -hmm. Do that. Okay. Then after church, you get out to church and get in the parking lot, light up your cigarette, light up your marijuana, open that 40, Open that six-pack that you bought on the way to church, and, and you're getting ready to throw down on that Coors or Bud Light, and, and then you start talking about people in the church, and you start using profanity. Before you get home, you have cussed everybody out, and you're just as worse as before you went to church. Come on, somebody. Say, ouch, 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 ouch. Here's another thing. We're going to finish up soon. Honoring people. Because they are good fundraisers. This is rampant all over uh, America, especially America. Honorees. They have banquets this time of the year. Honoree. The church is going to have a banquet. They're going to honor three or four people uh, who are leaders in the church. Mainly they're going to honor and the, the honor ones who brought in the most money in the church. It's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. What have any of us done to be honored by the church. Come on, somebody. And, and the thing is, we would rather honor people than to give God the glory and honor that he's due. Let me ask you this. Are you committing idolatry by not tithing? Do you tithe? Do you give 10% of your income to the Lord? Mm. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Here's another one. Uh, giving to the poor, but advertising it. You know, like these celebrities. They, uh, I saw um, uh, one uh, on, on Facebook yesterday, Serena Williams. You know, she's building churches in Africa and Jamaica, and they're building schools. And so they have a big old picture of Serena uh, on, on the uh, web and uh, uh, some uh, African kids around her. And, and, and so who gets the glory? Serena. Okay, not God. She's building schools in Africa. Or Oprah Winfrey, she does the same thing. Or a whole lot of others. And, and then there are pastors on their online services or on their TV services. They have video scenes of uh, feeding the hungry and, and giving out poor, giving out blocks of uh, meat and cheese to the, to the poor and advertising it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do that, you don't have to advertise it. You're giving unto the Lord, not for self-aggrandizement or not for self-edification. It's like, you all see what I'm doing to help the poor and needy? Y'all see me now, don't you? Y'all Don't y'all see me? See what I'm doing? I'm giving blankets out to the, the, the cold. I'm, I'm taking soup to the poor. Uh, let me get a selfie with this poor, th this homeless person. <coughs> let me take a selfie. Well, it's not a selfie if it's with someone else. Let me take a picture with this homeless man, and you put it on the web. Y'all see what I'm doing in the name of Jesus. So who's getting the glory? You are. And God said, no flesh shall glory in his presence. I've got a few more. Let's just take it. Inviting politicians to speak at your church. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so sickening. I mean, many of these lying politicians, they talk out of both ends of their bodies. You know, you have a mouth and you have another end. They talk out of both ends and they use all kind of profanity and say anything and, and hurt people's feelings and degrade people. But yet you invite them to your church and they say a few nice things about the church, about the pastor. And before long, you're hooked. You're hooked. They don't say a thing about Jesus. Or they might say, God bless America, or make America great again, and you're hooked. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we could go on raffles, bingo, win a gift, the lottery. These are all forms of idolatry. So you put all your emphasis. You have a special service to have fun and games at the church. Bingo, lotteries, raffles. You're selling dinners. I can't tell you the number of churches. Hey, Loretta, when I lived up in Pennsylvania, the number of churches selling dinners, and they advertise it. They advertise it. Some advertise it on, on Facebook. Some advertise it 
uh, uh, by text message, uh, 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 chitlin dinners and pigfoot dinners and and uh, rib dinners and chicken dinners and 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 come and get your dinners, ladies. And, and and here's another one: having selling dinners after church. Why sell dinners at the church when you ought to be sharing your food and giving free meals and inviting the hungry and the poor to come also. Well, we could go on and on, but i got to get to this one. Idolatry in the church. Idolatry in the form of work, 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 work. Where are you going? Working for my church. Where are you going? Got another meeting. Where are you going? Well, the church is doing this. Where are you going? Where the church is doing this. Work, work, work. Some of y'all are workaholics. And God wants some of you to slow down. And, you know, you can work yourself to death and miss heaven. I'm going to say this again. You can work. People don't want to hear this, but you can work yourself to death trying to please the pastor, trying to please the church, trying to make an impression on people. You can work yourself to death and miss heaven. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Some of you need to just stay home sometimes and minister at home. Clean your house. Clean out the refrigerator. Cook a good meal. Get some rest. Take a nice soak in the tub. Do your body some good. I know, ouch, 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 Pastor. Ouch, 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 ouch. I'm working for the church. I'm working for my church. Some of you have to be in church five days a week, six days if they ask you. Alice, look, you're working for the church. You're not working for Jesus. And then churches, the many churches who do not have Bible study, and the many churches that do not have prayer meeting, you need to teach the people how to pray. Teach them how to read the word. Teach them how to discern the word of God. And then we'll close this with, close with this one. The many Christians who refuse to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. If you refuse to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or you don't know what the baptism is, or you've never asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are missing it. You're just like Israel going through the wilderness. You're missing the glory cloud. You're missing that cloud by day and that fire by night. You're missing it. Jesus said this. It is, it is expedient that I go away. And if I go, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has already provided the comforter a.k.a. the Holy Ghost, the Hagios Numa, to live in us, to indwell us, to fill us in power, to guide us day by day. But the majority of the church, the majority of the church, and the majority of the pastors out there do not teach about the Holy Ghost baptism, don't want you learning about the Holy Ghost baptism. But let me tell you, there is nothing sweeter than getting baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the gift and evidence of speaking in tongues, with the power to lay hands on the sick, with the anointing to cast out demons, even to cast demons out of yourself. There's nothing like the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised this to the church, but yet the church refuses his promise. That's idolatry. And the church says, I don't need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I got this. I'm my own man. I make my own decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to say, ouch. You need to, need to repent. You need to uh, 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 humble yourself and ask God to forgive you because to reject the Holy Spirit is to reject Jesus Christ. How can you call yourself a believer, a born-again believer, if you reject the Holy Spirit who has, is the one who baptized you into the church. Why do you deny the Holy Spirit? If more people worldwide would receive the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit live in us and guide us 
day by day there be peace, joy, happiness, be less hatred in the world, be joy and harmony, there be health, wealth and prosperity. God wants to give you health. He said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Receive the Holy Spirit. Ask God to bless you with the Holy Spirit and receive the Holy Spirit. Study the scriptures on the Holy Ghost baptism. And I don't care what Pastor so-and-so says or, or says or what Brother Doodad says. You receive the Holy Spirit. You believe the Word of God and let the God, Word of God work mightily in you. Give God the glory. Flee from idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Flee. Let us run from idols. Let us repent from idols. Let us cast down all those idols. Let us get rid of those idols in our lives. And let us live for Jesus Christ. And let us obey the Word of God. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your Word today. It was tight, but it's right. I thank you. Now, Lord, bring healing to people, cause people today all over the world to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and to get baptized in the Holy Ghost to receive the gift that you have for every believer. Help us to flee from all idolatry. And, Lord, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we bless you, Lord. Bring healing to the people today. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, bless God. I'm going to stop the recording in a moment, but before I do, I want to ask those of you who want to get in touch with me, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'll be glad to answer uh, your questions if I can. I'll be glad to pray for you or direct you to someone who can pray for you and minister to you. Praise God. And if you want more information, contact me. You can find me at my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or give me a call, 770-559-9710. Be blessed and highly favored. We're going to stop the recording.